Everyone uses an ethical framework to guide their decisions, such as when they attempt to control an infectious disease. Sometimes these ethical frameworks are such a part of our decision making that we don't think about them carefully or how they might be guiding our decisions. We will discuss three of them, apply them to a real situation, and then discuss the implications of these frameworks. Let's start with the situation, which draws from a true story in the United States. It starts with a young, physically fit Navajo man suffering from shortness of breath. He was rushed to a hospital in New Mexico and died very rapidly. While reviewing the results of his case, the medical personnel discovered that the young man's fiance had died a few days before after showing similar symptoms. With two unexplained cases, the New Mexico Office of Medical Investigations launched an inquiry to find any other people who had a similar case history. Within a few hours, they located five young, previously healthy people who all died after acute respiratory failure. In the meanwhile, the laboratories were conducting tests to identify the pathogen. The tests were coming back negative for every disease they tried, including the bubonic plague. At this point, the CDC Special Pathogens Branch was notified. All nearby states and the Indian Health Service joined in the effort to confront the outbreak. At this point, the news media started extensive reporting of the outbreak. The news coverage focused on the Navajo, with titles such as Navajo Flu Spreads. The misperception grew that the unknown disease was somehow linked to the Navajo. Widespread public concern grew with the Navajo as the object of their fears. Although person-to-person -person spread of the mysterious infection was not suspected and travel was not restricted, tourism to the area ceased and the Navajo students were turned away from visiting pen pals in other states. The media coverage also included two other messages, how the health agencies wanted the public to respond and how some Navajo wanted to respond. The health agency suggested that anyone experiencing certain respiratory symptoms were to seek medical attention immediately. In the meanwhile, people were encouraged to engage in flu prevention behaviors, such as hand washing, using masks, and self-quarantine. Some people living in the Navajo reservation did not want to follow the flu prevention methods. Instead, they wanted to follow the traditional wisdom, which suggested watching out for mice and carefully disposing of household items touched by mice. Imagine that this is when you have been brought into the situation. As you fly out to New Mexico, you need to come up with a plan for how to proceed. You need at least two courses of action that you could start as soon as your plane lands in New Mexico. In your action plans, make sure you answer two sets of questions. The first set is related to your action plans. What do you want to happen? Who should do it? Where should it be done? When? How? And what's your rationale for why you're making these decisions? The second set is for your assistance. While you're thinking through your decisions, also consider what additional facts you would want your assistance to be seeking out while you're following through with your plan. In other words, you have some people you can send out to gather additional information while you're starting with your action plans. What do you want them to find out? Before you start filling out your plans, you need to make your decisions within one of three ethical frameworks. Overall good, do no harm, or patient autonomy. If you pick overall good as your framework, your decisions should ensure the greatest overall good for the most people. If you pick do no harm, your decisions should avoid causing hurt to the infected people. If you pick patient autonomy, your decisions should empower patients' agency to make decisions about their health and the at-risk community's ability to decide their fate. Pick one of these three ethical frameworks to guide your action plans. Now that you've selected an ethical framework, it's time to fill out your action plans. Based on everything you've learned in this course and your selected ethical framework, what are two courses of action you would take once your plan lands? Remember who, what, when, where, how, and especially why. In addition, what kinds of information would you want others to gather while you're getting started with your plans? Welcome back. 
If you selected overall good, then you may have decided to install an immediate quarantine of the area with health and military personnel, based on the premise that you're limiting the infection from the rest of the country. If you selected do no harm, you may have decided to set up a small meeting with local Navajo leaders and health agents to get assistance in encouraging the Navajo community to engage in flu prevention behaviors, which have no side effects, without stigmatizing them. If you selected patient autonomy, you may have decided to have a town hall to understand more of the community's needs, misgivings, and understanding of the situation so they could take ownership of the outbreak-related activities. You've likely noticed that I've described three very different kinds of action plans, which can happen when people use different ethical frameworks. The outbreak ended. We're all here. So are you curious about what ultimately occurred? It was not a flu. The scientists ultimately discovered that it was the hantavirus, and humans are infected with it via contact with infected mice. In Navajo tradition, mice are described as bearers of an ancient illness. Traditional medicine describes avoiding mice, keeping them out of one's homes, and isolating food from them. Indeed, some Navajo elders have predicted this hantavirus outbreak, which occurred in 1993. Oral tradition recorded similar outbreaks in 1918 and 1933 after increases in the rainfall, produced increases in agricultural crops, and the number of mice. The CDC has a terrific case history of the 1993 hantavirus outbreak for those who want to read more. While the action plans I described above fall in line with different ethical frameworks, none of them address the ultimate problem, the mice. In fact, some of them could have made the outbreak worse. For example, if everybody had been confined to a space where they had more contact with infected mice. The point of this video is that we all have ethical frameworks guiding our decisions, and it is important to understand the consequences of each framework. In addition, ethics alone may not guide you to the best action plans. In real outbreaks, it's not uncommon for the actors involved in identifying frameworks. In the worst cases, these actors spend their time arguing their ethical positions at the cost of finding and attending to the evidence needed to make informed decisions. With this video, you should have a better ability to identify your ethical frameworks and their consequences, and consider how we can best incorporate ethics into health decisions during outbreaks.